You are listening to a Clark's World Magazine podcast with your host and narrator, Kate Baker. Greetings, Clark's World citizens. I hope this podcast finds you extraordinarily well. This is our final story for the month of May, issue 176. I hope that you've enjoyed May's stories. And as ever, we will continue all the stories into June, July, and August and beyond. And that is thanks to you for your support, for your ongoing listenership, for going to patreon.com forward slash Clark's World, or subscribing to the magazine. We can't do this without you. So thank you very much. Our last story is titled A Star for Every Word Unspoken and is by Kai Hudson. Kai Hudson lives in sunny California where she writes, hikes, and rock climbs with enthusiasm, if not skill. Her work has appeared in Podcastle, Interzone, Anathema, Spec from the Margins, and other fine places. You can find Kai at kaihudson.com. And also, Kai has another story here at Clark's World. March 2019 brought you treasure diving. So, my dear listeners, I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you're getting out in warmth. And I promise, hopefully, good things. So, I hope you can sit back, relax, and let me tell you a story. They say Amma's in there, but she's not. She's not. It's just an empty metal capsule. They're lowering into the ground, and the rain is too wet, and the flowers too bright, and the wailing of the mourners. It's so much. Too much. And Na Hyung slaps Appa's hand away and shuts her eyes and... Blink. She flies forward with the force of the stop. The sling catches her, thick belts snapping back to punch the air out of her chest. And Na Hyung gasps, gags, tastes the sweet, sour acid of last night's nutrient fluid flood the back of her mouth. With effort, she swallows it back, closes her eyes and breathes, taps her thumb to the other fingers of her left hand in quick succession. Pinky, ring, middle, index. Then backward, index. Middle, ring, pinky. Repeat with the right, outward in, inward, out. The world settles, if only faintly. She's freezing. Even with the insulation of the sling suit, her body won't stop shivering, and Na Hyung rubs furiously at her arms, hissing through chattering teeth. Her sling suit is the most advanced model available but even its thick multiple layers and advanced nanotechnology weren't designed to sustain a single lone human in deep space for more than a couple of days. And the pod itself was meant to transport the slip drive, not a human being. So there are no life support systems. Right now, the only things keeping her alive are the suit, the bladder of nutrient fluid that's already running out of replication base, and her mission. It's waiting. Somewhere out there in the vastness of empty space. She just has to get there and catch it. Computer, she murmurs. The words taste thick and gooey like overcooked junk. Distance from... Distance... Distance from Earth. Ma'am, we are approximately 3.8771 light years from Earth. Too soon. Far too soon. Na Hyung swallows down the scream, crawling up her throat. It's her ninth jump already. She can feel it in her bones and the roots of her teeth. So why hasn't she gotten it right yet? Why isn't she better? Smarter? Faster? If she had been, then maybe Alma would still be... No. No. The modern English word no derives from Old English na which in turn derives from Proto-Germanic ne and awa. She taps her fingers, outward in, inward out. Ne plus awa, identical to ne, same roots, same usage. No. No, no. The insects crawling beneath her skin finally settle, temporarily calmed by the soothing rituals of repetition and concrete information. 
Facts don't change. Facts are safe. Fact. This jump has failed. Fact. The slip drive still works. Fact. She can keep going. Recalculate, she blurts, birthing the word from her lips like an alien infant. Countdown. Recalculate. Initiate. Countdown. The computer doesn't hesitate. She has always liked computers. They never misunderstand her when she speaks. They never look at her like something unrecognizable. A slow hum starts up from somewhere behind her, buried in a messy forest of struts and wires. Coordinates recalculated, the pod tells her, engaging slip drive in three. Na Yong closes her eyes. Two. Blink. Na Yong! Through the haze of pain and noise and terror, and why is there so much? She barely registers the voice. Fingers seize her wrist with a grip stronger than steel, slowly but firmly pulling her arm back from her mouth. Na Yong! Stop! Everything tastes of blood. The scent of it, coppery and thick in her mouth. But that's okay. It's better than the rest, the other kid's laughter that grates like glass, the too scratchy uniform and too tight shoes, and above all that the buzz, the endless humming. Like the whole classroom is swarming with bees, like they're looking for her, hunting her, trying to cover her in squirming fuzzy bodies and eat her up alive. Cho no young. Ama's face resolves itself from the chaos, long red-brown hair, rumpled blouse, eyes kind above her smile. Na Yong, what is it? Where's the wrongness? Tell me. Tell mommy where the wrongness is. Over Ama's shoulder, teacher frowns, crossing his arms. There's nothing wrong, Mrs. Kim, he says. That little twitch of his jaw that says he's trying not to raise his voice. Your daughter just started having a screaming fit in the middle of reading time. This sort of behavior. My daughter, Ama answers, and though she still smiles, her voice has the sharp edge of a diamond blade. Always knows when something is wrong, teacher. You just have to ask. Na Hyung, where is the wrongness? Bzzz. Na Hyung answers. Little flecks of blood fly from her lips, joining the deep red bite marks already decorating her forearms. Bzzz, bzzz. Alma blinks and looks around. Teacher's frown goes all curly like he ate something bad. Mrs. Kim. There. Alma squeezes Na Young's wrist, just to remind her an assurance, before rising and crossing the room in three strides as the other six-year-olds look on with wide, scared eyes. She reaches up and flips a switch on the bright UV light hovering over the green plants by the window. The beehive goes finally, blessedly, silent. Mrs. Kim, that light feeds our sprouts. We are teaching the children that plants can live off the sunlight coming through the window perfectly fine, Amma finishes. Coming back over. As teacher splutters, she kneels down, still smiling. Is there less wrong now, Na Hyung? Na Hyung nods. There's still so much going on here. The feel of her clothes, the stares of the other students. But it's not too much anymore. She can handle it. If she can just bite a little more, have a bit more of that pain to drown out the noise between her ears. Alma's smile trembles. No, na yunga, she says. No biting. That's not good. Here, remember what we learned? Tap, na yung. Let's tap our fingers. Alma's hands wrap around hers, encouraging, guiding. Thumb to pinky finger, then ring, then middle, then index. Outward in, inward out. Good. Now the right hand. That's it. Outward in, inward out. Breathe. Breathe. We're okay, 
says Oma, and Na Hyung nods because we are. We are. We're okay, she says. Mommy loves you. Mommy loves you. Mommy loves you. She does that all the time, teacher grumbles, the mimicking. The other kids think she's making fun of them. Alma sighs. It's a tired sound, like all the air inside her is rushing out through a leak. Na Hyung reaches out and presses a palm to Alma's chest, feels the steady thrum of her heartbeat through the rumpled blouse. Badum, badum, she says before pressing her other palm to her own heart. Badum, badum, mommy. There are sudden tears in Alma's eyes. Yes, Na Hyung does. Thank you. Then she tilts her head and squeezes Na Young's hand. Hey, how about coming to work with me for the rest of the day? And Na Young? Thank you. It's the worst stop yet, her body a lump of loose jelly jerked back and forth by the slings. Na Young gags and loses the battle. Acid and chalky nutrient fluid fly from her mouth. As she retches and heaves, pale pink globules forming briefly inside the helmet before the slingsuit sucks them out in a burst of forced air. She can barely see, everything spinning wildly all around. The suit seems to weigh a thousand pounds even in zero gravity. She coughs around the sticky thickness of saliva and vomit. Badum, she whispers. Her fingers tremble and begin to tap. Mommy. Apologies, ma'am, says the pod. I do not understand those commands. Inward out, outward in. Or was it the other way around? Na Hyung forms the words like lumpy dough, like when Hal Meoni used to let her help in the kitchen, making sweet song pian. D -d distance, earth, distance. Ma'am, we're approximately 6.0089 light years from Earth. Too far. Tears sting her eyes, more salty drops. And a suit to eat. Now she's too far. What if the slip drive never gets it right? What if she never finds it? Never gets to... No, she has to keep going. There is nothing else. Next jump. Next jump. R re... It's a bare croak. She takes a breath, thin and reedy, and tries again. Recalculate. Acknowledged. A brief pause. Coordinates recalculated. Engaging. Slip drive. She loses consciousness before the countdown can start. Blink. Alma waves her chopsticks, barely avoiding hitting Na Hyung with kimchi juice. What would you do, she says, if you could travel anywhere in the universe in the blink of an eye? The cafeteria is overrun this time of day, crammed with engineers and researchers and technicians, all arguing and conversing over their food, all trying to solve one problem or another. Though she's only been here a few times, already Na Hyung loves it. The people don't grate on her, not when they talk about numbers and theories with the fluency of a native language. And the layout of the labs, the lighting grid, even the ventilation system. It's all so efficient, so predictable, solid and unchanging. Maybe she can work here one day. Maybe she won't have to go back to school, school where the other kids look at her like a monster. And teacher keeps asking her why she can't just be normal. Like it's a lesson she missed, but can make up for with a report. Na Hyung? Amma's voice goes soft yet sharp, the verbal equivalent of a tug on her sleeve. Amma knows Na Hyung doesn't like to be touched, not unless she asks for it. Amma knows a lot of things. Na Hyung, are your thoughts focused on me? Another one of her mother's tricks, Na Hyung sometimes has difficulty parsing. Are you with me? Too many possible interpretations. She nods 
and Oma smiles. Okay, see here. She tears a sheet of paper from her notebook. Ama is the kind of person who prefers paper to tablets, which Appa chuckles about but always indulges. Let's pretend this is an area of space. Currently, if you're in a spaceship and you want to get from one point in space to another, what do you do? Nahyong touches her finger to the one spot and draws it along the length of the page. Ama nods. Correct. You have to go straight, for all intents and purposes. But what if you didn't have to? What if you found a shortcut? W w wormholes. Ama has a lot of astrophysics books at home. Nayong has read them all. Not quite, although it's the same basic theory. Ama touches her finger to the same spot from before. Let's say you want to get from here. She indicates another point near the opposite edge of the sheet. To here. But instead of going straight, you instead choose to curve. She slowly curls the paper over so that both points align. Na Yong frowns. W wormholes. Ama shakes her head. Generating a wormhole would require an immense amount of energy not to mention a mess of calculations we just don't have the processing power to achieve, she says. Think about it. Spontaneously building a tunnel from one part of space to another? That's a lot of work. But what if, instead, you curved even further? Amma curls the paper until it forms a cylinder. You bring point B directly onto point A, completely superimposed in space-time. Then you no longer have to worry about building anything. You're already at your destination. She smiles then, a spark in her eyes that warms something in Na Hyung's own heart. Something she can't express, but she knows Ama will understand regardless. That's what it means to be a mother. At that point, it's simple, really. All you have to do is... Blink. Another sickening jolt. Na Young groans weakly in the confines of the sling suit. Her stomach rolls, but there's nothing left inside her. Where is she? The pod has no windows, no screens for display. She coughs, thick and wet. Uh-oh. That doesn't taste like spit. How many jumps now? Twenty. Thirty. Where is she? Commands, ma'am, the pot asks. Na Young breathes, her lungs scream and her head throbs, entire body a single raw, exposed nerve. Maybe she doesn't even have a body anymore. Maybe she has dissolved into a gooey mess, with what remains of her brain only able to send a single directive. Find it. Find it. Find it. God, she wants to give up. She can still go home, can't she? Appa will be waiting for her, Appa with his cheekbones stark, his eyes so full of grief. Appa who has lost, just as she has. Commands, ma'am, the pod prompts once more. D d d distance. Ma'am, we are approximately 5.1219 light years from Earth. Oh, God. That's close. Closer than she's ever been. Something flickers in Na Young's chest, something small and weak and unmistakably warm. Something like hope. Not close enough, but almost. Almost. Re. Recalculate. As the computer drones its acknowledgement, Nahyong concentrates on breathing. She must survive this. If she dies, no one else will ever remember Ama. Not like Nahyong can. Ama, Nahyong thinks. As the countdown starts and the blackness rushes up, my thoughts are focused on you. My thoughts. Blink. Honey. 
Appa hurries up to them, one gloved hand pushing up his round, wire-framed glasses. Honey, you're not bringing her in here again. Why not? Amma glances at Nayong. I already cleared it with management. She's too young. She's thirteen, Amma corrects him gently. And got into yet another fight at school. What was I supposed to do? Cho Fansu. All the fight goes out of Appa at that. His shoulders slump and he looks at Nayong with such sadness. It's like her father is just made of sadness some days. Like God long ago decided to build him out of other people's tears. Oh, Nayong. Did they make fun of you again? Nayong looks away. There are boys at school who don't like a girl who can solve complex math equations in the blink of an eye. There are boys at school who don't like a girl who barely talks and stutters and echoes others when she does. And there are boys at school who don't like a girl. Appa sighs. Can you keep her out of the testing lab at least? Viewing window only. Mr. All oh complained last time about having a child in the same room as the prototype. Mama rolls her eyes. Na Young could calculate circles around all of our engineers, and you know it, she says, but backs off at Appa's pleading look. All right, honey. I'll keep an eye on her. Appa grins and turns to Na Young. Say, how about after Alma shows you the slip drive, you come by my lab? Maybe if you're good, I'll even let you try out a suit. He indicates the clear double doors behind him. Na Young glimpses a bunch of people in dark blue uniforms, some with tablets, others soldering and welding behind thick protective gear. Beyond them, stuck to the smooth metal test wall like globs of spit are several black suits wrapped around pale yellow dummies, dozens of thick belts extending out to keep their cargo safely suspended. Papa works on sling suits, specialized gear that will allow future spacegoers to withstand the horrible forces of slip drive jumps and survive in deep space without needing the additional weight of seats or sleeping bags or latrines. He met Ama when one of his prototypes failed, shooting a belt out through the wall of his lab and nearly impaling her as she walked by. Na Young has never understood how they ended up married, but they love each other. It's obvious in Appa's gentle touches and Ama's warm smiles, so she doesn't ask. Satoshi greets them in the viewing room. Dr. Kim, he says, bowing low. He's one of the junior engineers under Ama's supervision, fresh out of graduate school, who speaks Korean with a funny accent. His gaze stutters only briefly on Na Young before he turns to the window. Beyond is a giant metal room absolutely crammed with researchers and engineers, all of them conversing and arguing and taking notes, and at the center stands a thick nest of metal struts and wires, coiled and knotted together in a tangled mess. Na Young can't see what's inside. So I think we finally fixed the coolant issue, Satoshi says. Kang generated a new matrix and rerouted the auxiliary valves. We should be ready for preliminary testing in Engineer Tanaka. The man striding up to them is Mr. Oh, Ama's boss. Na Young recognizes him because of his tendency to favor his right leg when he walks. An old injury, he claims, comes from his time in the military. Na Hyung doubts that, personally. Mr. Oh doesn't seem like the type of man who would ever show allegiance to anyone other than himself. Behind him walks a man who looks like the president, except not nearly as fit, with many more wrinkles. He's accompanied by a gaggle of reporters and aides, whom he ignores with the ease of long practice. It's good to see you hard at work, as usual. Mr. O indicates his sharply dressed companion. This is Assemblyman Kim. I invited him here today to tour the building and gain a better understanding of the slip drive. The people deserve to know exactly what their taxes are funding, says Kim. Na Hyung steps back behind Oma. She doesn't like this Kim. He speaks like they're in a drama and he's the only one with a script. Satoshi and Oma both bow. The young engineer then glances at Na Young's mother. We're honored by your visit, Assemblyman, he says. This is Dr. Kim, our senior engineer and lead developer on the project. She can... I'm 
interested to know how this slip drive actually works, the assembly man interrupts. I understand there have been several hiccups in developing the theory. Ah, but pardon my boldness, but the theory is in fact quite sound, Satoshi says. In, in fact, Dr. Kim authored one of the first papers on space-time super curvature over ten years ago. Hmm, good. Mr. Oh glances briefly at Ama with a bored smile before turning back to Satoshi. I'm sure you can tell us all about the project's latest advancements. You see, Sir Engineer Tanaka is one of our best and brightest. We recruited him straight out of U Tokyo. Nahyong frowns and looks at Ama. Why has her mother not said anything? Why is she just standing there, staring at the ground, letting Satoshi do all the explaining? She's the one who always gets so excited about the slip drive, making Appa roll his eyes indulgently while she raves about blueprints and tests over meals. Where is that energetic woman now? Who has taken Na Hyung's mother, the fearless Dr. Kim, who memorizes theories and makes connections and gives orders in the lab and replaced her with this meek, quiet woman who won't even look Mr. Oh in the eye? Well... Satoshi, to his credit, looks to Ama once more for guidance. Receiving none, he bows once more to his superiors. Uh, so, so far, we think we've got a working curler. That's what we call the pod the slip drive is housed in, which is responsible for actually curving that other part of space over and into the reach of the drive itself. With regard to the actual jump, we're, uh, we're still working on the calculations. Stupid. Everyone turns. Ama stiffens. Nahyong looks at the floor. S Stupid, she repeats. Mrs. Kim? Mr. Oh's smile is a pasted on thing as he waves toward the door. Perhaps you should escort your child out of the lab. You see, Assemblyman, we want to hire more women here. Of, of course we do, but sometimes their family obligations simply. Stupid. Na Young points at the whiteboard standing a few feet away, covered in scribbles and numbers in Alma's handwriting. Satoshi can't do that. Neither can Lee or Park or Young or anyone else. And why doesn't she say anything? Alma, tell. Alma, tell. Mrs. Kim. There's something jagged onto Mr. O's smile now, like the edges of a broken window, and it finally gets Alma moving. Please forgive me, Director, she says. My daughter, she has a... a condition. She's reaching for Na Young, but Na Young isn't having it. Where is her mother? She wants her mother. Alma, tell. 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 Stupid tell. Stupid. And then she's screaming, and Ama is shouting, and the assemblyman is shouting, and O oh is shouting, and the loudest of them all yelling for security, yelling at Ama to get that little brat out of here, or so help me, and it's too much. And Nahyong clamps her hands over her ears and squeezes her eyes shut, and... Blink. She's dead. She has to be. Why else would everything hurt so? Why else would it feel like she's falling apart at the seams, all her individual cells dissolving into the cold emptiness of space? Commands, ma'am. Oh, God. Still here. Still searching. Where? Where is she? Why does she hurt? She wants it to stop. She wants. Oh, my. Ma'am, extrapolating command based on previous history. We are approximately 5.0023 light years from Earth. Somewhere through the haze, a spark. That's so close. So close. Maybe finally close enough. Maybe. S -s 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 Scan. Someone else. Speaks the words, Nayong simply hangs in the sling suit and listens. Radio. P Pre. P Preset 
f frequency Ma'am, no broadcast detected on the frequency you requested. No. I'm not right. Try again. Try again. Ma'am, extrapolating command based on previous history. Confirm. Recalculation? Y yes. Coordinates recalculated. One more. Then she'll go home. Or maybe she'll die. That doesn't sound so bad. Blink. Nayong misses her mother. They don't talk anymore, or well, her mother tries. She leaves voicemails throughout the week that Nayong deletes without opening. She comes to Nayong's door and knocks, and her voice comes through muffled. But Nayong ignores it. This woman who accepted O's censure without complaint, who now sits at a desk reviewing grant applications and spreadsheets while Satoshi leaves the lab, cannot be her mother. She cannot be the same woman who turned off that light in teacher's classroom, who defended Na Young from the judgments of the world with such grace and ferocity. So Na Young cuts her out. Appa tries his best to bridge the gap. He tells Nayong about the latest developments on the slip drive, about how Alma works so hard to make sure they'll keep their funding, even after Assemblyman Kim threatened to cancel all government contracts. He talks about sling suit tech and how Satoshi still can't eat bulldog without crying. But even Nayong can sense the brittleness beneath. Appa's foundations have always been rooted in family. Without them, the cracks already present widen out into deep, crumbling fissures. Which is why, when Nahyong leaves her room one evening looking for food and discovers Appa seated at the kitchen table, pale, staring at nothing, she barely reacts. It's only when he says her name as she's boiling water for ramen. Cho Nahyong. Like it's been torn from him, that she turns. Appa looks at her. No, past her something neither one of them understands. There's, he swallows, everything about him suddenly lost and oh so small. And there's been an accident. Na Young doesn't believe in accidents. The universe is built on structure and predictability. There's a theory and calculation for everything, and thus nothing exists that was not somehow set in place by something else beforehand. But as Satoshi bows low, almost parallel to the ground, and tells them what happened, Nahyong can't find congruence in it. Why was Alma even in the testing room to begin with? What reason did she have to be working on the prototype directly? And where did she go? We, uh... Satoshi's voice breaks and he coughs into his fist. Nayong barely squashes the urge to hit him. Doesn't he understand they need more information? Why is it that no one seems able to look at her and Appa without bursting into tears? We reviewed what footage we had from the time of the, the incident. It appears your wife was uh, in the middle of making a recording when, when the slip drive failed. We don't know what it was since the malfunction destroyed the servers, but we do know that sh she... He looks at Nayong, expression crumbling. She meant to send it to you, Cho Nayong. Appa stands next to her perfectly still, a statue except for the tears streaming down his face. Satoshi turns away, shoulders trembling. People approach, offer condolences, but Nahyong ignores them because she knows. She's known it since Appa gave her the terrible news. She turns 14 today. Alma would have wanted to celebrate. Blink. Where? Where is she? Everything drifts. 
She is a moat floating in an endless dark ocean. She is small. She is nothing. From far away. Amends, ma'am. The voice sounds familiar. Extrapolating command based on previous history, we are approximately 5.0026 light years from Earth. Um. No broadcast detected on the frequency you requested. Confirm recalculation. Maybe she says yes. Maybe she says nothing. Nahyong goes away. Blink. They lower the empty capsule into the ground two weeks later. Nahyong falls into a fit. Appa managed to calm her down after 20 minutes, but not before she scratched herself bloody and bitten three people. There's talk of hospitalizing her, of giving her some time to herself, but somehow Appa manages to drag himself out of bed, long enough to threaten to take it to the media. And that takes care of that. Nayong spends long days docked in her room, curled up on her bed. She taps her fingers, outward in, inward out until her knuckles stiffen and the pads go numb. She rocks back and forth, reciting numbers and equations, general relativity and S-quarks and the pulse period of PSR 1913 plus 16. Over and over and over. But none of it brings Amma back. Satoshi snuck her into the surveillance feeds after the funeral, so after she has picked her skin enough to bleed and ripped all her favorite outfits to shreds, and screamed at Appa until he retreats into the master bedroom with haunted eyes for the nth time. Nayong watches them. Again and again, she sees Amma, wearing her old lab coat with a coffee stain on the lapel, hunched over one of the computer terminals, her body blocking the screen. Amma spinning around when the camera trembles, Amma eyes wide and mouth open as bright light floods the world and washes everything out. She will never see Ama again. The collection of particles and energies that once made up Nihong's mother no longer exist. But there is one tiny part of her left, one single floating bit, that is all that remains of the only person who's ever insisted on carving out a space for Nihong in this universe. So, with the certainty of a universal law of physics, Nihong decides to find it. It's something of a media spectacle, those first few weeks as an assistant in Alma's lab. Mr. O creates the position specifically for her, shifty eyes locked on the reporters taking pictures. Hero, scientist's daughter, takes the helm, reads one of the biggest headlines. The attention fades away eventually, of course. Appa seems grateful for it, retreating into the comfort of his work in the slingsuit lab. The other engineers don't quite seem to know how to approach her in the beginning. But after Nakyong recreates Amma's initial supercurve proof by hand from memory, they mostly let her do what she wants. Months pass, then years. Appa's team finally perfects their slingsuit design, a truly impressive piece of nanotech that immediately has American defense contractors calling them at all hours. Assemblyman Kim loses re-election. Young leaves the company after having her first child. Mr. O oh gets caught up in a scandal involving two mistresses, and Satoshi becomes director of Tanaka. Through it all, Nayong works. Her days blend together, go to the lab, work, ignore other people's sidelong looks, return home, repeat, repeat, repeat. Abba appears in there sometimes, a brief blip in the form of a quick dinner together, or a small, neatly wrapped present left outside her door on her birthday. Otherwise, they maneuver around each other like carefully arranged wine glasses, close but never touching. Nayong doesn't mind it so much. It helps to have purpose again, a mission, something she can fall back on when the world becomes too much. 
find it, she thinks. Every time the insects inside her buzz up and make her want to bite and scratch. Find it. When the other engineers stare and whisper behind her back. Find it. When the despair threatens to swallow her whole. Find it. Find it. Find it. Is it any wonder that, in the end, she does? It's chaos outside the pod. She can't see it, but she knows. Men and women run around shouting, pointing, working frantically at their stations. She can see Satoshi's face, the despair and terror as he yanks at the pod's metal clamps. She can see the second pod gleaming atop its pad across the hangar, the backup they built in case the first one malfunctioned. But this one will not malfunction. Na Young won't allow it. She takes a deep breath. The sling suit's belts tighten across her shoulders and chest, and she imagines they are Appa's arms, wrapping her up in security and protection. She wishes she could have apologized for locking him and his team in the sling suit lab, but he'll be released soon enough, and he'll understand. He lost Amma too, after all. As the hum of the slip drive starts up behind her, Nayong doesn't see her father stumble into the room, wild-eyed and disheveled. She doesn't see him stare, eyes bright with desperation, the deep, all-encompassing instinct no amount of distance or diagnosis or grief could stamp out. She doesn't see Appa turn and sprint for the second pod. Subroutine accepted, drones a familiar, computerized voice. Na Young's heard it say all sorts of things over the last five years, errors and assessments and status reports. But this unlocks something inside her. Something warm and clear and solid as a neutron star. She can be friends with this voice. They'll be spending a lot of time together after all. Cho Na Young turns 19 today. Alma would be proud. She closes her eyes. Engage. And the universe moves. Blink. Color. Light. What does this mean? Now young whimpers a bare, empty sound. She's so cold. Why doesn't she have a blanket? She can't feel her fingers either, which is odd. Hadn't she been doing something with them before? Noise, a faint, inaudible murmuring in the background. Nayong moans and forces her eyes open. Everything stinks of vomit and sweat, and she doesn't understand. Why are there so many colors? What do these shapes mean? Then, with the slow-moving assurance of a rotating planet, it comes together, the sling suit. She's in Appa's sling suit, and it's displaying something inside her helmet. A series of warnings, low oxygen, water reservoir, empty, suit, temperature, critical, and falling. She is dying, and she has failed. There are no tears left. Instead, Nayong sags, exhaustion pulling at her with the weight of a thousand chains. So here she is, an innumerable distance from home, having stolen the most advanced piece of technology in the world and pushed it nearly to its limit. She's out of food and air and will. Now she dies without completing her mission. Her mother forever lost and her father forever grieving. Oh, Appa, please forgive me. Hey, back. She blinks, slow, painful, the background noise. It's resolving transforming into a voice, the voice of a friend. Broadcast received, confirm playback. Oh. Oh, God. D d this. She licks dry, chapped lips, tastes the sour sting of acid and blood. D distance. Ma'am. We are approximately 5.0027 light years from Earth. Broadcast received on preset radio frequency. Confirm playback. 
Oh, she's here. She made it. She... Yes. 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 Commencing playback. A brief burst of static, and then... Nayonga. A different voice, a wonderful voice, the best in the universe, and it turns out she has a few tears left after all because Nayong tastes them as she chokes out. Oma. Her mother's voice continues, tinny and distorted, words flayed and broken up by time and distance. Yet underneath it all, it's still warm, still unmistakably. Oma. Might not get this. Aunt to sing. Or you, my English, not so good, but I will try my, but, okay, okay? A deep, crackly breath from five years ago. Happy birthday to you. Na Young closes her eyes. Amma's voice surrounds her, suffuses her world with music and warmth. Outside, stars die and others are born. And a mother's love for her child forms the foundation of the universe. A woman dead half a decade gives an embarrassed chuckle. <sighs> it wasn't very good, was it? Sorry. Better next time. Remember. Mommy loves you, Nayong. I'll see you tonight, and we can... Wait. What? Static, then silence. In the confines of her failing sling suit, blinded by warning lights and signals of her impending death, Cho Nayong smiles. It cracks her lips and hurts her face, but she doesn't care. Out here in cold vacuum, light years from home, and any hope of return, she has found what she came to seek. Alma is here with her now. She will not die alone. Slowly, Nahyong gathers her strength and her final few breaths and forms them into the most important words. Mommy loves you, she echoes. She imagines it rolling out from the pod into the reaches of deep space, her own tiny imprint on this universe, a neat little package containing all the love she has always held, but never knew how to express. Perhaps in time, someone else with a machine that outpaces light will pick it up, and it will make them smile too. The lights in the suit finally flicker and die. The world goes blessedly silent and dark. Nayong sighs out a long, tired breath and thinks about family and death and the bright, gleaming pinpoint of a soul and how maybe, when God made the universe, he wove all three of these things from the vast, unbreakable fabric of something called love. And there is no such thing as time or distance when measured in devotion. Deep within the thrumming circuits of the pod's computational system, the radar scanners register a sudden, familiar click. And what are your thoughts on the story? You can leave us a comment or question at the Clark's World Magazine website itself or under the About Us page where all of our contact information is listed in case you don't want to make a public comment. We have a slate of stories for you for June. I do hope you can come back and listen. And until then, I bid you a very fond and a very warm and hopefully a very temporary farewell.